Hey y'all, it's Io here with Noodle Nook, and I help teachers survive and thrive in special education. In this video, I'm gonna share with five steps to implement timers to control the behaviors in your special ed classroom. Let's get started. All right, y'all, before we go over the five ways to control behaviors using a timer, let's talk about why we should have a timer in the classroom at all. I mean, why use a timer in the first place? Well, there's four key reasons. The first one is because a lot of our students in special ed have a hard time telling time or internally marking the length of time between tasks. I remember once I asked a student how long we'd been working on an activity, and he told me we had been working on it for three hours. It had been like two minutes, but hey, for him, it probably felt like three hours. Anyway, our students do have a hard time marking distance of time. So using a timer is a really good way to help them not only learn how long timed tasks last, but also how long really is left in an activity that you're asking a student to do. Reason number two is because predictably transferring between tasks and sticking to a schedule helps students to feel more secure in their learning environment and end up doing better on the tasks that we ask them to do with fewer behaviors. So because of that predictability, we use timers to help us get through our day. The third thing is that timers can prove to be really motivating for students. If they're looking at a timer and they see they only have a certain amount left, sometimes that can help to start the behavior that you're asking them to do or complete the task that you've assigned. So for some students, timers are super motivating. And the last thing is timers can be really good motivation for you. <laughs> I don't know about you guys out there, but for me, sometimes I get off task or I lose track of time. Those timers help me as the teacher lead the pace of the classroom and keep all of us on track. So the fourth reason is really all about us as the teachers. We need that timer to help us keep going and keep on track. All right, let's get into the steps you need to take to effectively implement a timer inside of your special ed classroom. And step number one is deciding on what kind of timer you want to use. There's a bunch of different kinds of timers. You can get something a little bit more complicated. This has colors, it lights up red, green, and yellow, depending on how much time you have left. You can get something pretty standard, which is just a start, stop, and reset the time with the timer. Or if all else fails, you can always use your cell phone. I mean, there's nothing wrong with setting a timer on your cell phone and using that. There's also a couple of online timers that you can use. You can go to Google and just type in timer and keep time on Google. Or you can use something like Classroom Screen, which provides a timer to project on your interactive whiteboard. But the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter how you get that timer started, you've just gotta get the timer started. So step number one is pick the format that you like best. Step number two is to get a good idea of how long your students can actually work on individual tasks. This can be a little touch and go, right? But if you've got a student who's having behaviors every two or three minutes, asking them to do a five minute timer of work is not gonna happen. So you have to really understand how long your students can stay on task, how long your students all go between behaviors in the first place. So to use that same analogy, if you have a student who's having behavior, behaviors every one to two minutes, you probably wanna set your first timers for like 45 seconds because what you wanna do is set up a system of short work times followed by a break, reward, edible, or whatever you need to mark the end of a task before you start the next one. So if you're working with a student who has a really short attention span, you're gonna to have to use that timer on a much shorter cycle. But if your student is able to work for a little bit longer period of time, you're gonna set that situation up a lot differently. Remember, not everyone in your special ed class has to work with a timer at the same pace. You might decide that you're gonna set your teacher phone to keep tabs of the class at large so that your students are all on task with English for the next 15 minutes. But then you might decide that you wanna set an individual student timer with a student individually at their desk to let them know that they've got two minutes to get the first section started and then offer them an opportunity for a break. Then set them up for another two minutes to do the next step of the task within this bigger 15 minute cycle that you're using class-wide. So you can actually use timers a couple of different ways, but you have to know first is how long your students can stay on task. 
The third step is to set up a time on task then way of phrasing things. So let me restate that real quick. Everybody, we've got four more minutes of work and then we're all going to transfer to circle time. Did you see how I did that? Let me do that one more time. Everyone, we're going to be working on math for the next three minutes and then we're going to start on our calendar time. That way the students know exactly how much time is left and can also anticipate what's coming next so transitions are not so tough. So for you as the teacher, you want to be phrasing things in that way. First, we're going to do this for a certain number of minutes and then so that we can get that predictability into our routine. If you know a teacher who needs to hear this tip, you should definitely share this video on social media so they can get that information. All right, so what about step number four? Step number four is all about teaching your students what they're supposed to do at the start and the end of the timer. The timer goes off and then what? It's pure chaos? <laughs> no, you want to make sure that you're demonstrating to your students what you want them to do at the end of a time period. So is that to check their own schedule? Is that to put their work away and move on to the next activity? What exactly do you want the student to do when the timer goes off? Make sure that you explain that and model it for your students in a very concrete way so they understand exactly what you are wanting them to do when that timer goes off. All right, that brings us to step number five. We're gonna have to adjust things a little bit. Yeah, it was working, then it wasn't working. It worked a little bit for some kids and not for everybody. We've gotta adjust. If you say I'm whirling out timers and you are very firm on how that's gonna look, yeah, you're going to end up not enjoying this experience. <laughs> you've got to have some flexibility and you've got to be able to adjust to meet the needs of the students in your classroom. So that could be the amount of time on task, the type of timers that you use, or really just how you're pacing things out in general. Those are all things that you want to reflect on and adjust as needed. You may also decide that you want to chunk out smaller sections of time for certain tasks. Maybe something is choppy or not quite going right, or your students are getting really distracted in a certain section of your day. You might need to shorten the amount of time that you use your timer for in those uh, instances so that your students are a little bit more mm, motivated to keep going on the task that you've assigned. And then finally, I have a bonus tip for you. Make sure that you're reinforcing the kids when they do the things that you're asking them to do. You want them to use these timers and respond to timers appropriately so that you can better manage your classroom and better manage behaviors. So you've got to reinforce the positive things that you're seeing from your students. It's okay for you to gush a little bit in the beginning when you're really trying to set this example and then fade that back over time, but you've got to reinforce the behavior that you're seeing, especially if it's the behavior you want to be seeing. Well, there you go five ways to control behaviors in your classroom with a timer so that you can survive and thrive in special ed. Which timer format did you like best? Did you prefer just using your cell phone, an individual student timer, or the light up fancy ones? Drop a comment below and let me know which one of these timers you think will work best for you in your classroom. If you liked any of the timers that I used in this video, make sure you check out the show notes below. I'll provide links to those so that you can get the ones that you like best in your classroom. Did you find this video useful? I hope so. I hope it'll help you to survive and thrive in SPED. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos where I break down how-to tips and strategies to support you in the classroom. Also, ring that bell so that you get notifications when new videos are dropped. It is hard being a teacher in special ed, but just remember one thing, you got this. Stay strong y'all and teach on. This is Io with Noodle Nook and I'll see you next time.